welcome to all those people who are joining us online. Uh, it's great to have you join us. We've been having some good fun in the room here. Um, so uh, when we were putting together this uh, 10th anniversary special, we thought it'd be really good to reflect back on, on the history of GoGen. Um, and although we took it over in 2015, I keep asking about the date, um, before that, it was uh, run out of the OU Netherlands. Uh, and I don't know, still, still Robert Stunder, so he'll, he'll explain that. But um, one of the people we worked with to bring it to the, o, the OU UK was Robert. Uh, Robert's uh, a UNESCO chair in OER uh, and is a long time uh, advocate and uh, uh, activist in the OER area. Um, I've always liked hanging around with Robert. We, in a lot of the OER world is sort of dominated by, uh, by North America. And, and, and there's great people there, and we often go to lots of conferences there. By about the third day of an American conference, their kind of eternal optimism and upbeatness begins to wear on us Europeans. And so like, you, get, you get a little cluster of the Europeans forming in the corner just to kind of be miserable, you know, and, and talk about tea and that kind of stuff. So, um, and Robert's usually one of those people who I, uh, sort of migrate to at that stage. So it's been, it's been fun over the past few years. Uh, so I'll, I'll hand over to you, Robert, and uh, please take us through the, the history of GoGen. Thank you, Martin, and uh, well, thank you for the invitation for being here. I'll see if I can, uh, yes, this better. Um, well, welcome, uh, and um, because well, what I'm telling is what is in the title, Back to the Future. It will be mostly back, but at the end I will also, and that was the request I got from back, also have a, a, a short look to the future. Uh, the future of GoN, my personal view on it. Um, but it will mainly be about the early years of GoN, and it will be the story of Fred. Fred Muller, well, uh, the, uh, actually, he is the man who brought up the idea. I will tell the whole story about it. But this morning, when I was uh, eating my breakfast, and for the lemons at home, it was waffles with uh, maple syrup, um, I was realizing that some of you never have met Fred and maybe know his name, but uh, so I want to tell a short about Fred first, introduce him very short because, and um, that I've written down, I didn't prepare that uh, before I sent the slide because I thought about it this morning. So uh, therefore I'm looking a bit down that, um, uh, his career in Open started actually in 1985. At that time, the OUNL, the Open University of the Netherlands, started, uh, well, was, was, was founded, and he was one of the pioneers at the time. He was uh, the dean for the computer science uh, department, which was named differently, but uh, it, it, it was the, actually computer science. And in 2000, he became the rector of Magnificus of the OUNL, and he stayed there for 10 years. And in that time, in 2005, 2006, he initiated the first OER project in higher education in the Netherlands. And I know Fred all from long before that, 1995, and he asked me to be uh, the project leader. So he was very, uh, uh, yeah, for me, a very important person because he brought me in this world of open. And uh, well, he, uh, 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 many know, he passed away in 2018. And uh, he still remembered, uh, thanks to the team of Martin, uh, they named the OE, uh, the GoGN Award after him, the Fred Mulder Award. So that's a bit of background for uh, Fred Mulder, the, who is the real hero of GoGN. Well, first, the uh, I see it as a bit of research, but it is a kind of research I've never done before. Uh, it's, I think, the kind of research historians do. And I didn't go into the methodologies historians use in using their, uh, when they do research, it is not a literary review or so, where you look for uh, uh, scientific papers and write uh, something about them, learn something about it. It is about document analysis, so I had a lot of documents available uh, from the archive of Fred, of course, but also my own archive, the, uh, the, 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 the email archive, uh, a lot of presentations, the slides of presentations from Fred, Fred Mulder. And um, uh, I had also several discussions with a 
person who worked very closely at the time also with Fred Ben Janssen, uh, who I'm currently, uh, yeah, a lot of involvement with him. We are doing a lot of things together uh, in, uh, in, in research and uh, in, uh, in education. And uh, at the time of GoGM, he was a strategic advisor at the OUNL and in the time, therefore, working closely with Fred. And I checked some facts with the uh, wife of, uh, of, of Fred, Anja Muller, and also with Cable Green and, uh, and my memory. That is also, uh, well, an, an important part of the lecture. But this is what Samuel Beckett has said about memory in his uh, essay about uh, uh, Marcel Proust, uh, that the memory actually, he says it much nicer than I can, uh, but actually memory is, is not reliable. And when it is the only source, you can doubt whether or not it is really the truth. And uh, so, so what I have tried to do is triangulate. Uh, so when I find uh, resources and then I found facts, see if, I, if there were other resources which also had the facts, well, actually, that's a bit what we are also doing in our kinds of research. Uh, and um, but it also memory is also, of course, uh, softening things. It is for me preparing this talk as one of the nicest uh, pre uh, preparings I have ever done for a talk because it 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 was for me uh, well. Uh, a uh, uh, trip down memory lane. And uh, I think and I hope that, uh, and I'm sure that for some of you, parts of this presentation will also be a trip down memory lane. And I hope that uh, you will enjoy that. So therefore sit back and relax. Initial setting. So I want to you do it in a chronological order. And it started in 2010. And it started in 2010 when Fred Mahler was stepping down as rector at the OUNL, but he was not uh, 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 retiring at that time. He was not uh, 60. At that time, you had to be 65 years old for retirement, and he wasn't 65 at the time. So he became a university professor at the OUNL, and he applied for a UNESCO chair on OER. And this chair, and at, at the Basque University with Rory McGrew, they were the first two OER chairs, UNESCO OER chairs, uh, and it is now a whole network of OER chairs. I don't know how many there are currently, but at the time they were the first two. And in 2011, in the conference, the Open Courseware Conference, uh, the global meeting, the Open Courseware Conference, Open Courseware Consortium, Conference, the Open Courseware Consortium, is what currently is known as OE Global. At the time, it was uh, named o OCWC. It was in Boston, Cambridge, Boston, and that was the first mention of research in a plan he presented there together with uh, with Rory about what they wanted to do with their OER chairs. And this, this these slides mention the first mention of research. And, uh, but not how to implement it. That was not in this presentation. And you see two names on, uh, on it. It was Fred Moller, of course, and Jos Rikas, who was at that time, uh, well, you see it, the coordinator of the UNESCO chair program. Um, and this is a slide. I've taken literally the slide from the presentation and uh, uh, have it here. Uh, the major focus on the research. So it is about knowledge development, the dissemination, etc. You, you can read it here. Those were his first ideas about he wanted to do more about research and or organizing research, research on OER on a global scale. But not how. Well, the same year in June, uh, uh, he and uh, Rory uh, gathered together in uh, in New York to um, well to 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 coordinate what they wanted to do together. What uh, what activity would the chair of Rory do? What activity would the chair of Fred do? And um, there was an agreed plan of action. And you see there, and that made it uh, red. There were two main lines of action, and I will focus, of course, on the first line. That was what he called then the Global OER Graduate School, with a priority on PhD level, which coordinated OUNL. So that was 
Fred's part. And the part of Rory was the OER Knowledge Cloud, which also still exists uh, and which was very, uh, yeah, very much uh, aligned with his, uh, uh, his um, involvement with the iRODL journal. So that's therefore, uh, this was very logically that Rory did this part. And the rationale behind this graduate school was that he, Fred thought there is a need for a substantial expensive uh, for the OER research base, because uh, at that time the research was not so, there was done research, of course, but it was not so coordinated. It was not, uh, and it was needed because uh, um, well, you, you say it, it, it was still in a pioneering phase and to make it, uh, uh, yeah, get the whole uh, movement uh, further, this research was very much needed to, to, to have a firm base. And, uh, and, and therefore, um, the international context was for him crucial. When it stayed local, it was, would not be uh, very, uh, yeah, it wouldn't be very fruitful, maybe locally, but not globally. And, uh, and that was the rationale that he thought we should start an international graduate school, um, mainly for the PhD level. And he had foreseen a kind of 17 uh, uh, benefits. And I've shown the first five. I don't, it is not in order from the, in the most or so. I've just taken the first five. And you, but you see also that uh, in his view, it was not only GoGN, uh, it was not named at that time, but it was not only about the PhD student, but also in involving the PhD supervisors. Uh, but he is called the promoters and the, and, or co-promoters. And it could also be uh, involving the university. So becoming a member means you could become a member as a PhD student, but he more or less uh, also expected that the supervisor also became a member of the GoGN network and the institution became a member of the GoGN network. And you see here where he has uh, written down those five benefits that, which he thought would be uh, valuable for this uh, graduate school uh, and for which it, those, these benefits would count. This was set in June 10, 2011, and then he was pitching this idea on several places, and I found two occasions. First in uh, Brussels on the 8th of September, It was a more European context. The EADTU, the European Association of Distance Teaching Universities, had their R&D strategy meeting in Brussels, uh, where he uh, presented his ideas and discussed these ideas to gather feedback from uh, that, uh, uh, that, that uh, those people. And uh, at the Open Ed 2011 in Park City, uh, where, um, where he also gave the same presentation and got the feedback from a more internationally oriented uh, audience. And he, among those, this presentation, he presented the principles and the characteristics, and it was still about a distributed decentralized model. And it should not be that Gojian would be really, uh, 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 yeah, um, on the uh, on the steering wheel of the of the organization of the uh, research that was the uh, involvement and the, um, the, uh, the, the, the task of the university where the PhD student was doing his or her PhD research. And memberships could be both from, not only from PhD students, but also from experts and from institutes. And this is a literally quote from this, uh, uh, from this presentation, that efforts will be made to set up an externally funded grants program. So uh, membership was not, uh, uh, well, of course, in the overall, it was free, it, but it was not free in the sense uh, that uh, being a member and then do nothing, that was not, uh, not meant to be, of course. So you, there was expected some uh, involvement and some, uh, some activities from you when you became a member and not anyone would become a member. There were such certain, uh, uh, well, certain, um, uh, skills you, you should uh, have uh, before becoming a member. 
Um, and that is the funding part, uh, especially Martin asked me for that, uh, because funding is always a key. And well, what Fred was always very successful in funding, getting funding, finding funding from for his ideas, because Gojen was only one of his ideas. He has done many projects and uh, in, in, in both national and international uh, uh, settings. Uh, uh, and, and for all these projects, he, he always managed to, to, to get funds from, well, whatever. And you see here, the first funders were already in 2012, and that was our Dutch Ministry of Education, Culture and Science, for uh, where he got 120k euros, which is in the current exchange rate about 126k uh, US dollars, and also the Director General, General from the Education and Culture of the o European Commission, because at that time they were thinking about uh, uh, about PhD studies and how it could change and be more uh, uh, future uh, future proof. And uh, he could, he would convince, he had uh, tried to convince him and to, that this approach could be a way to think about. I come back to that later. And in 2013, he got a grant from the Euros Foundation. Euros Foundation was, he was familiar with because this first project in 2006 was also been made available, it was been um, uh, possible uh, uh, partly by grant from the Euro Foundation. So uh, he, uh, with this idea, he was uh, again going to the Euro Foundation and they uh, um, funded the first three GoGen seminars with 153k dollars. So this is uh, this about funding. And this was at that time, the support team. So you had the uh, support from Jos Rikus, I mentioned him earlier, and the Marina Pongas, that was the Kali Matthews at the OUNL, and uh, Bernardo Tabuenka. Bernardo Tabuenka was a PhD student at the OUNL. He uh, managed the website and the more technical stuff. Um, and he's also uh, the first uh, Gojian alumnus. So uh, he was, uh, I've looked it up. Uh, I, I wasn't sure if it was him or Bernard uh, Kuyubatsi, but it uh, was uh, Bernardo Tabuenka. And he got feedback from a lot of people, of course, from his, uh, um, um, from his friend and ally, uh, Rory McGreal, who was very important uh, at that stage in the feedback. They had a lot of discussions and many more. And uh, I've mentioned two of them, Susan Dentoni, who was at that time uh, a UNESCO. And uh, well, and because he, he did this as an activity in the UNESCO chair held uh, at many contexts at that time with uh, Susan D'Antoni and with Cable Green from Creative Commons. And then came the launch. And uh, what I found in the archives of, uh, the, uh, of OE Global is the presentation where Fred uh, did his launch. So I want to uh, 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 let him do it himself. So the Global OER Graduate School, um, we changed the name uh, pretty recently. So we took out the word school and replaced it by network because it turned out to be a bit confusing, uh, certainly for Anglo-Saxon universities to talk about a school uh, at the global level is kind of difficult and we decided to then reword it and the initiative is still the same, but we just use another word. So the process for the uh, uh, OER uh, graded network was to draft a working document after the meeting that we had last year in, in New York to consult uh, among the partners and individual experts and we received great support for the idea and uh, but also some additional second thought feedback that came up later um, from um, uh, more uh, in particular the Anglo-Saxon universities which made me change the document a little bit make it a lighter version, make it a little bit more flexible, and to create some diversity in the partnership and the membership that we foresee. And like I said, we changed the word network into, uh, we changed the word school into network. And we can consider uh, today as the launching day for the uh, global OER graded network. The rationale for the uh, 
this initiative is that. Well, this, so 16 April 2012 was actually the start of Gojian, the official start of Gojian. So now you get thinking from, but we are celebrating the 10 years anniversary, but I come back to that later because the, 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 this was, Gojian was in the world, but now the real work had to start. And this real, real work was uh, 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 finding PhD students who uh, become members, finding experts, finding supervisors, etc. Uh, and what you uh, what you have seen and what you uh, maybe have noticed that Fred didn't mention the name GoGN. He talked about graduate OER, Go global OER graduate network. And uh, when you uh, listen to this uh, presentation, he, he abbreviated to grad network, but not GoGN. And I remember that uh, after this presentation, I don't know if it was at the same conference or after that, that Fred told me that Cable Green came up with this acronym. So he said, well, name it GoGN. And after that, I've never heard Fred mention Global OER Graduate Network again, and, uh, to a stage that I had to look up, what does GoGen already mean? Because uh, this, I didn't know it anymore. But I checked with Cable, and Cable couldn't remember this. He said, literally, that detail is no longer in my brain. I could not find any reference in the documents. When you look at the documents, then and he changed uh, from uh, always using the acronym GoGN and not why he was using it. So, so, that's, uh, uh, so it is only based on my memory. And you know what I've said previously on memory. Maybe this isn't true. Maybe this is true. We will never know. <laughs> but OK, I really want to give the credits to Cable. Uh, in my memory, he is the, 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 the inventor of this acronym. And when we have, uh, at the end of 2012, uh, you see there were 19 experts uh, 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 joined the, the GoGN network, five institutions, four of them were open universities, uh, and uh, nine PhD students. Well, and then you look at those PhD students, there are some familiar names. You see Judith, you see Gino, and you see Igor, and you see Paco. Paco. <laughs> so those are the PhD students. Even before the first seminar, they were already uh, had joined the network. And you also see in the list of experts, very, um, the, the, the last one mentioned there, uh, well, a guy named Weller uh, <laughs> from the UK. So that's uh, uh, those those were the experts at that time who had joined the network uh, and, uh, uh, and it was still not so, not so clear what their precise role would become in the network. And I don't know if it is still is actually. Um, but um, then came the first four seminars and that is actually where Goyen really got out in the open. That was uh, where, uh, where it started. And the first seminar uh, was on the 6th and 13th from a week in Cape Town. Uh, and it was chosen in Cape Town uh, because uh, it was a kickoff at the time from the large project Roar for d uh, which was uh, uh, guided by um, Cheryl uh, Hodgkinson Williams. And uh, well, and that is, uh, put it there, that is actually uh, considered the, the, the real start of GoGN because then it became really visible in the world. And therefore, this 10 years anniversary, I think it's really rather logical to, uh, to, to have it uh, uh, come this as the real start. And you see here what uh, Fred, I, I uh, got this uh, uh, translated. It was in Dutch and I, it was translated. Uh, I translated in a report he made uh, to, to uh, well, he got funding, he had got funding from the uh, Dutch ministry and he had written, had to write a report about what did he do, had he done with the funding, uh, did he reach all his goals, etc. And you see his, uh, uh, that there was unanimously very enthusiastic about the output, etc., etc., which was actually all the seminars, I guess. Uh, you can have the same quote uh, for it. And 
it was after this seminar that I joined the, 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 the team for GoGN at the OUNL. Before that, I was I had joined. There were several reasons for this. But uh, after this, I, uh, I took over from Jos Rikers and, uh, and joined the, 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 the team. So I had uh, here, sir, uh, from, uh, from this uh, taken, and you see. Uh, well, uh, you you can look for yourself who you recognize. So I don't know all the people. I know well, of course. This, yeah. this this of course is Fred. This was I don't know his name. I have seen, but it was the Michael. super. This is Michael. Oh, okay. Uh, well, uh, Igor. Uh, this Anna Algers. Um, Cheryl, of course. Uh, well, uh, Glenda, Felix Seifert. Maria Kacharis, uh, of Paula Kacharis, I don't know what's it. Paula Cardoso. No, it's not Paula Cardoso, or is it? Oh, okay. This, I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> oh, well, uh, Judith, um, you know, this is Bernardo Tabuenka. Who is this guy? Deepak, Deepak Pus Prasad, uh, this Bernard Nkuyupatsi, uh, Jos Rikers, and uh, Daniel to of Edmundo Tovar. Yeah. So this, uh, so this was the first, uh, well, picture, and it is, uh, I found out this is, uh, uh, I found some similar pictures in the uh, Gojian. Um, uh, albums uh, on Flickr, but those were other persons. It, it was, I think, uh, taken after the, Go, uh, the the OE Global in 2017, which was also in Cape Town. So this is, and uh, this picture was uh, I found in the archive of Fred. And other seminars before it was sent over to the OU UK were the April 2014 Jubiljana, and uh, there is and it's available on the website of Goji and uh, a book created an ebook with uh, the reports, the slides, video lectures uh, of, of this seminar. November 2014, Washington, uh, it is simultaneous with the open ed, and the uh, uh, Banff seminar in April 2015. Uh, and this was organized uh, simultaneously with the uh, uh, OE Global meeting. Uh, and it was also the conference uh, together uh, where the OUNL uh, and OU UK did it jointly. Uh, and as you see all these conferences, because this there was a lesson Fred had learned from this first seminar, doing it together with another activity, uh, in this in this case it was War for D, uh, gives more more uh, output. It, it is more valuable, uh, and therefore he he uh, all always uh, organized these seminars jointly with a conference. And in most cases, it was OE Global, but not always. It was also open ed, and it, it is also the same. But, but, but you are also still doing, and I think it's very valuable. And uh, you see that, uh, that, that uh, in all these conferences were also separate tracks, GoGN tracks, uh, where the GoGN students, uh, the, the PhD students from GoGN, presented their research for a wider audience in, in, the, in the conference, which was also an exercise for, for them, of course. Well, here's uh, the group photo from uh, uh, Jubiljana. Uh, shall we go to, to it again? Those are got the uh, YUC. Uh. <laughs> Who? Yeah, that's Dimitri Popovsky, and that yeah, Dimitri Popovsky, he he uh, he uh, he he was he he invented. Uh, well, I can go back. Uh, this was a former logo from GoGN, and he had uh, devised this this logo. Uh, uh, he, he was very 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 good at that. Um, well, in Washington. I couldn't find a group photo, so uh, this was uh, one I I I taken myself, 
And you see here an overview, but of course, on all these pictures, Judith is, uh, is present. <laughs> and you see also here, uh, this was uh, the wife of, uh, of Fred, Anja Mulder, who was also joining, always joining the, the, uh, the GoGM meetings. Um, and well, you, but it is only part of the part of the group who was uh, uh, present at that time. And here is the group photo of Banff, uh, where uh, where you see uh, well the people who are uh, a lot of people who are here now are were already also there. Uh, now three hours drive from here, uh, and you see there that uh, that was thank you, Marina and the heart because uh, Marina Pongras uh, had uh, always done a lot of organizing work uh, uh, for, 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 for the flight tickets and the, the hotel reservation, etc. And this was the, at that time the idea to thank Marina uh, from a distance for her work. I have also uh, created some statistics when you look at the number of participants, uh, is there? Yes, there is. Uh, oh, but it is not. Uh, you see that uh, um, supervisors lag behind, and that was the supervisor. That was the idea of Fred. Supervisors got the funded for the uh, for the, the the hotel expenses for the time of the uh, of the uh, Gojian seminar, not for the conference, because in his idea they had sufficient other. Uh, ways to get funding to go to conference and so so the majority of the funding was meant to support the PhD students those were in the heart of GoGN and that was there and maybe therefore the the number of uh, supervisors were not so high in all those uh, seminars and you also see uh, the number of PhD students well we have presented this now 163 or something like that. And it was, well, it started at the end of 2013, 15 students. I got this number from, from one of those reports uh, Fred has created. And, and in the, by the handover the, the, to the OUK, there were 35 PhD students, member of GoGM. And when you see how the uh, how, how it is divided by region, then you see that the majority came from Europe and Africa. And there was only, well, uh, North America at that time was not a single uh, PhD student coming from North America and only one from, uh, from South America who attended once in Ljubljana and uh, it, uh, the other uh, from, from Oceania, there was Deepak, Deepak Prasad. Um, and then came the handover to the OU UK in 2015. And the reason was because Fred retired in November 2014 and the UNESCO chair ended because he, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, this was part of his UNESCO chair. He retired, there was no follow-up to take over at the OUNL. So he was thinking about, well, then I should uh, uh, transfer it and, uh, well, and. Uh, in an uh, announcement letter, uh, where, uh, it was a joint letter from Fred and Martin to the PhD students to announce this uh, takeover. Um, you see here in the last sentence that the uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, uh, um, factors was that the uh, the OUK had just started their OER research hub. And it was a very, it seemed very logical to connect GoGN with this OER research hub. There was a team in place, and therefore, uh, yeah, they 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 were the, the ideal part party to take over. And that was taken was done the, the final process in July 2015. Well, and it, also from that moment, we had uh, taken a picture. There was also a group picture, but nobody could find it. Uh, and uh, so we have taken this picture uh, where uh, well, I've discussed it with, uh, with Beck uh, yesterday. If she wasn't uh, present at the time because she wasn't in the, uh, in, in the group. And uh, I thought maybe she had taken the picture, but there is a mirror there where you see the photographer, but we can't identify who, who was it. And it could also be the waiter of the restaurant, which we asked, can you take a picture of us? And uh, so, so we don't know, but uh, well, I, 
I'm, um, I have it is at the end of the presentation. I have a call of phone with all the mentions I heard from back. Okay, CC by Martin Weller. So Martin, uh, your <laughs> it's on your name. And when I reflect at the hand over, and this is my personal reflection, um, although it was it was more or less uh, uh, forced by the circumstances, the, the retirement of Fred and no follow up at the OUNL, it the handover also came at a very crucial moment in the OER movement, because at that time you could see a trend uh, where, the, where the, the, the research was mainly from uh, before that on open instruments, I, like OER, MOOCs, open policies. And you see here the, an overview of the topics from the first, uh, uh, first um, um, group of uh, PhD students, and the majority of those topics fall on the disc. And you see that uh, that there was more a, a shift to these kinds of research, open practice, value-driven value approaches like open pedagogy, social justice per perspective came, came along. And actually, the 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 the, the, the knowledge about, about these kind to 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 organize and to uh, uh, to uh, to support in these kind of topics were much better uh, grounded in the OU UK than it was at the OUNL in the group of Fred uh, because Fred was no education uh, I I wasn't either uh, we have both a better background uh, and so so but that was in hindsight. It was not at that time that we realized it, but when I prepared this prep, uh, this presentation, and I was thinking about this. I thought, well, uh, looking back, we can say that it was also very. It it has been very good for the network this takeover. Hmm. It isn't doing. Uh, it isn't uh, proceeding. Uh, I don't know what. Ah, okay. Thank you. Uh, what I've also done is uh, to to uh, to look uh, at the uh, slide ten. I presented the uh, rationale for uh, for uh, for topics, uh, how the uh, PhD student aligned with this rationale, and you see that the uh, I've 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 done it with the description I have, and the most PhD students at that time were aligned for the uh, second rationale, provide a solid fundament for introduction and implementation of OER innovations. And the last, uh, well, the, the last uh, rationale had overlap with all these previous topics. The, all those previous topics also uh, aligned with this last uh, uh, topic. So that's, uh, and maybe, I don't know if that is uh, uh, is being th think, thought about or is thinking about at the current GoGN network. Uh, maybe is this rationale still the same? Has it changed? Uh, and uh, are the topics, how are they now currently related to the rationale of the current GoGN? But that was, I'm looking back. And then the future, the rationale, when you think about the rationale being GoGN, uh, mostly isolated students doing a PhD uh, in an institution where there is no open program, but there is part of an other educational program where this is one of the topics, is still valid for most of the PhD students. Uh, steady growth is still needed. Uh, the, when we look at the UNESCO recommendation of OER, you see that there is there's still to be done a lot of work and also a lot of research. And so this growth is still needed to get the movement uh, further. And maybe if it should, uh, because it is growing, 163 members, uh, that there is, and uh, Martin mentioned it already uh, in, in his introduction, maybe we should also think about more locally organized uh, uh, GoGN, regional chapters of GoGN. Uh, so not global OER graduate network, but regional OER uh, graduate network. And Fred already mentioned this idea in 2011, where he, uh, in one of the documents, talked about EUGN, European OER graduate network. Um, and it is it, it could give an opportunity for joining forces in region-specific topics. Uh, 
uh, and maybe those regional chapters could be on the supervision of an UNESCO OER chair in that region. That's maybe a way to think about the future of OER. Thank you. I'm just going to make a comment if that's okay. I think it's an interesting uh, example, Gojin, of how um, I've been having some conversations with other people about when people take something over. Uh, like, I think there's often a temptation to just destroy it and start again. <laughs> and I think we didn't want to do that. We kind of, I think, and I think it's interesting how much of that original vision is still the kind of the core of Gojin is, you know, bringing students to. Uh, uh, to an event and getting them to present to each other and offering that support. And I think it's a good example of how something evolves and you you tweak elements to it. You know, I think we've changed things like we don't bring the supervisors, we try to concentrate just on students and we've done things like produce the uh, the resources, you know, and done fellowships. But I, but the kind of core part of it has remained the same. And I think that's that's kind of a good model, I think, for lots of other things. You know, that, you know, find Find the bit that's actually really important and that works, you know, and you can change and innovate around that but you need to maintain the uh the kind of core identity of what made it valuable and, and important i think that goes for institutions or projects or anything um sorry, i'm not sure what my question is i, I guess <laughs> i guess when you look back at it you know are, are there any changes or, or things that uh, have happened to it that that surprised you or you know or made, made you think that, that that wasn't what you were looking for or different well, what, what I noticed because after the takeover, I well, uh, I stepped down, of course. Uh, the, 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 I, but I, well, I was still a member of GoGen, so I keep following it. And what I uh, uh, what I saw was this change of direction, this much more attention for this more value based uh, approach of of OER, and um, uh, yeah, and 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 therefore uh, looking the the right people. And what 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 was really well, not surprise me because this was one of the aims Fred also had, but didn't realize it in in, in sufficient ways. Was this this uh, this more uh, yeah a PhD education part, the the the, the, the handbooks you created uh, as also as as a group effort, uh, everyone. But uh, that was also an ideal of Fred, but he didn't manage to 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 get this realized. Uh, well, maybe it was a too. Uh, to 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 um, yeah to young network at the time and not so many students uh, at the time and now we have a lot of alumni uh, at the time there was no alumni uh, Bernardo was first but it was after you had taken over that Bernardo uh, graduated for his PhD so that uh, that gives you a much firmer base to build upon and that is I think uh, has been very fruitful for the network because that uh, then then and what I also know is and is it a surprise? Well, maybe not. Uh, is is that GoGen is now really a brand? It is known in the in the not known gradually. I I, I mentioned yesterday. Uh, I, I I attended the the PhD uh, um, 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 the PhD uh, event of, of of Marion last uh, last week, and in the reception afterwards, I talked with a PhD student who was doing something on nowhere, a Dutch PhD student in Leuven in Belgium, and I. I wasn't focused enough to uh, to ask her, did you ever hear of GoGN? And uh, but I think not because she uh, she wasn't uh, known uh, by you. So so there are still also students doing a PhD in OER or openness, not known, uh, not um, uh, uh, knowing of the existence of of uh, of GoGN. Uh, and I think, well. Maybe that is because they are so isolated. Um, do we have any comments? Uh, John? Okay. Um, I've been I've enjoying seeing those photographs. They're kind of like, look, look at all the fresh faced enthusiasm of the people there. <laughs> uh, Vid? Hi, thank you so much. I had a question just from my ignorance. I wanted to know a little bit about the Open University in the Netherlands and in the UK. 
are they like to what extent were we completely separate institutions or were we branches of the same and was it a big deal when it hand, got handed over from one no another? not at all uh, because it was it, 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 it was uh, um, actually the OU UK was the first uh, open university at that model uh, in 1969 it was uh, and the OUNL was modeled after the uh, of the, the the model of the OU UK so in that case they were uh, rather similar uh, the uh, and actually I mentioned the first open project at the uh, at the OUNL in um, 2000 started 2006 it started one month after the open learn project of the OU UK started so at that time there was also a lot of 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 of, of uh, uh, meetings between uh, people from that project, Patrick McKendrew, Andy Lane, uh, those two people in uh, particularly, and and our project, and that was uh, uh, mainly Fred and myself, uh, because their project was uh, a factor, I think factor twelve larger when you look at finances. Uh, our project had half a million euro and and two thousand. $200,000 from the Euro Foundation as funding, and I think the $12, $12 million from the Euro Foundation. So it was much larger, but still we could learn from each other. And uh, so, so, there, so there was no, uh, uh, at that level, there was already cooperation and, and no uh, from each other's activities. And, and the takeover was, uh, because there was no UNESCO chair anymore at the OUNL uh, at that time. So, uh, so, and it was a UNESCO chair activity. So it would, was wise, uh, wisely uh, to, to take it, give it over to, uh, to, to an existing uh, group like that of Martin. And at that time, I all, also had left the OUNL to another university. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for this talk. I love, really love the historical approach. It's, it's wonderful to see that and learn about that. I'm curious if, because the part of the initial concept was the formation of a school, to your knowledge, where are the schools in the world or the, the programs in the world? In North America, we always talk about programs. We talk about a, a, you know, a PhD in open. Uh, are they, do they exist? I've seen a couple of masters emerging and probably PhD funding in some of the open universities focus on that. But what I don't see is, is a genuine physical space. This is the center for research in open education. No, practice. I can't, I can't found it. And therefore, and that is, that had been the case, uh, uh, which brought Fred to this idea of GoGen, and it's still valid. There are, when I, I discussed this with Martin in, uh, in pre pre preparation of this, uh, do you know any groups like those of Martin who are specifically focusing on openness? And maybe there are some, and uh, you mentioned the master, well, there is a uh, master leadership and open, ed open education in, uh, in the University of Nova Gorica. Uh, that's a master uh, which is globally uh, oriented, uh, mostly online. Uh, I don't know any other master programs that are uh, uh, specifically focusing on openness. Uh, and I, and maybe that's a good thing also because openness is a means to an end and openness is one aspect of education of an open uh, uh, research on open and especially it should be about research on education with open and not and also also on the the what i call the instrumental things uh, so adoption of oer is still not uh, not uh, uh, not not uh, at, at on par but i think that also that's my personal view that attaching oer to educational opportunities and changing education is for me the key to bring the movement really further because otherwise it is something well you have to do but why what's in it for me as a teacher and that's uh, so i i really value this this change of direction from a more instrumental to a more value driven uh, and this value lies in better education in my view thanks um as a quick aside the group that you made me think of um, is the, uh, with that question I mean, is the Center for Open and Education Research, is Olaf Svaki Richter's group. They're not really a school, but they are a research group of like 20 people or something from different institutions. And they're probably the biggest group in Europe that I'm aware of. It wouldn't surprise me, that's as an aside. 
Uh, thanks so much, Robert. I really enjoyed that. And um, it's really, really good to sort of see the, the, the story of the development of the network. I'm also particularly grateful to you for clarifying that it was 2013 that the first proper events happened because we were preparing for the 10 years, like 10 years of GoGen. And then I found something from 2012 that had GoGen written on it. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> it's 11 years of GoGen, but no, it's, it's, we'll go with 10 years. Um, so uh, one thing I think that's sort of interesting about the development um, that you've outlined is going from a kind of small network where essentially everyone can know each other personally. You've got 15 researchers, 10 PhD students, something like that. Those people can all physically meet in a space each year and they can kind of get to know each other, they can coordinate. And as you grow the network, that becomes impossible because there's just too many people um, involved in it. And so I think this, this is one of the the challenges of going forward is like and we've been trying to sort of use openness and building a kind of open community as a way of expanding without necessarily going to a bigger sort of capacity of people and you know um i think there's just a sort of limit to how big a network can be and you can still know everybody within it and even us as the coordination team don't know everybody we haven't met everybody and there's people you know who haven't been able to come and that kind of thing um so so it's not really a question as such you've already outlined some you know this sort of federated model as a, as a kind of destination for that. Um, but I think um, that's one of the really key things for the network going forward is how can we continue to grow and maintain those kind of personal, meaningful um, community relationships um, while still expanding and having that kind of um, growth trajectory. I think that's one of the key things. Yes, I, I agree. And, that, and actually, I, I, I don't agree with what you say. Well, maybe only the first uh, GoGN seminar in 2013, there was everyone involved, not everyone actually, because I came to, uh, I found a list of participants, but this list did not comply with the picture, and I found out that that some of those on the list couldn't make it, uh, well, like 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 it was uh, to, today, and uh, uh, so 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 there, there were more, but there were only two more maybe, um, but. Already the second uh, seminar in, in Ljubljana, we couldn't uh, uh, inv invite everyone because there was a limit of funding. Uh, that, 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 that was a natural limit and it only became worse. So we, we, we made decisions like, well, uh, he or she has attended two times, so now someone else uh, should, 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 should attend. And so, so those kinds, and I think you, you will also have these kinds of, of deliberations when you uh, decide who will or will not attend. But of course, your problem is now a problem. It's not a problem. Uh, it, is, it is an opportunity. But uh, uh, it is, uh, you saw it was 35 students, and now it is, uh, well, 160, which are not all PhD students, but it is much larger than it was. And I think it is It is about, uh, uh, it, it is, uh, yeah, this loose coordination. It may be that it is. And, and you could also ask yourself the question, is it necessary that we, really know each other uh, uh, so that 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 is undoable uh, i think and well in organization theory there are ways to 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 cope with with those things uh, and maybe you should also look at the mafia <laughs> <laughs> okay they have, uh, they have they have they have they have so, they, um, they have found ways they the, the, found ways the, the, to organize those the, those, those those kinds of networks <laughs> uh, uh, we are bootlegging. I just want to apologise to the people watching online. I was standing in front of the cameras. They got a view of my bald spot for about <laughs> 10 minutes. Uh, so I've got uh, Michael first and then Judith. So this isn't really a question, just a comment. Um, Athabasca, we're thinking about places that are doing open. Um, they're rebranding the EdD program to be an open distance and online EdD. So there is a place. That said, I think there's a big difference between labeling something as an open program and actually having a program dedicated to research about open. And I think that's something we also have to be very wary of. Thank you very much, uh, Shua. When you finish up your presentation, I had a very deep breath because <laughs> uh, this revives a lot of memories because from the beginning of uh, the network and even before the network, when I met Fred 2010, a number of uh, uh, cases that we discussed before you've talked about this uh, um, morning and I want to thank you for that. I think uh, my personal experience and personal um, uh, journey was one of the triggers towards forming such a network. And I believe that uh, 
yes, it is a very um, worthwhile network for PhD students. And I want to read. Um, I didn't forget your uh, last statement on the futures that rationale is still very valid. I'll add to that and say that the network holds great promise driven by the ongoing advancement in the technology in the world and the shift in the academic landscape, especially for my continent and the increasing interconnectedness of the world as a result of what we do and currently are. And uh, really, it was a beautiful presentation, but very emotional to some of us who got to know Fred. And just a year before I could be pronounced to graduate, he passed on. So that added one more year to wait. You can imagine how the metaphor this morning was identifying to my experience, the darkness, the valleys. By the end of the day, the penguins did for me a great thing. This network, please clap for each and every member of this network. And I want to thank the group and the team at the OU in the UK. Great team. When the handover was done, the first person that uh, Fred um, at least introduced to Martin and their team in, was myself and Igor Lesko. Uh, we were, Fred was our supervisor, the two of us. And uh, we really feel at home and we are very happy to be part of this network. And my question still remains that uh, I think I also connect with what uh, Robert mentioned about uh, the regions, the, the, I mean, the, the regional chapters, you know, we were discussing over tea with Viv and Virginia and Paco as well. How can we have something maybe for Latin America and Africa so that we can be able to fix the problems that we normally have of the context of the OER resources so that we can localize them, that the voices of the locals can be heard to strengthen what we do in terms of OER. Thank you. A bit emotional, but beautiful. Thanks. I'm so pleased you could come, Judith. That's great to hear. Uh, did you want to go, Helen? And I think we're almost wrapping up. The question I have links to leadership and every good network really is dependent on those who lead. And I see people in this room who have led this network and, you know, God forbid, Martin goes off into the sunset. I think of, I think of the, the leadership <laughs> that, that Fred, that Fred started and, and, has rippled out into where we are today from from this room. How do the leaders of this network? Um, how are they fed? How are they? You know, what what do they do to 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 feed the rest of us in the room? I don't know. You, I think you should ask leaders. Uh, you should look at Martin. You should look at the whole team of Martin, which for me, all our leaders, uh, maybe you should look at regional leaders maybe, uh, maybe talk with Rory. Rory also still has his UNESCO chair. I consider him also a leader. Uh, and, 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 and uh, well, uh, Wayne McIntosh in New Zealand, also a leader, but uh, also a UNESCO chair, but uh, going another way with his ORU. So, so there are many, many leaders who stand up uh, uh, and 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 are necessary for this movement, and they will become new leaders. I think the the PhD students of today are the leaders of tomorrow. That's what I expect. I I, I don't think we need leaders particularly. I don't think we are. I think we're more like redirectors of things. It's like, and I think you know. I think from from the network you get lots of leaders, people like Judith, you know, and uh, Catherine Cronin and uh, Christy, and all the people coming out of the network itself. I think. Um, have we time for one more? Quick, go on then, Kathy. Um, speaking to what you identified as a shift from platforms to practices, was there a shift in what conference GOGN was associated with? I um, think that Martin can better. Yes, yeah, so it, it was more a kind of convenience thing, but so it was usually OE Global, and I think OE Global paused for a year, and we went to the OER conference, which is run by Alt. Um, and this year we did both of those. We did uh, OER. So, so, that's so, so I think 2017 was the first one. Yeah. So that that was. Yeah. So I so, so I think always 2018 was probably the first uh, OER aligned one. Yeah, I think that was the year when you 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 shifted the time you were doing it. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. 
uh, but no, I think we'll continue to align with OE Global probably. Yeah. Okay, and, 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 and maybe both, you know, this type of thing if we, if we have the funding. Yeah. Okay, I think that wraps us up and we're in time for dinner. So just another round of applause for Robert and a really interesting, fabulous presentation. Thanks.